Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I want to talk about casting for Delta Salmon. We're talking about the Fall King Salmon Run when they come into the Delta. Uh, first thing I want to bring up is where you can do this legally. All the way along the Sacramento River, you know, the whole Rio Vista area is very popular for trolling. But really, once you get up the Sacramento River, once you get into that, uh, you know, Vieras, the McQualamy, that sack area, and the Moak, uh, that's where, you know, jigging and casting becomes more effective and legal. Basically, anything above Highway 12, you can fish salmon legally. Uh, below Highway 12, I believe you have to be on the Sacramento River. There may be some leniency to that rule. I'm not sure exactly, but my theory was on the Sacramento River or above Highway 12, and that's where I've seen guys doing things legally. I've seen sheriffs give guys trouble um, any area even remotely close to being off of the Sacramento River. So if there's something different uh, to that and you know it, chime in. Please leave it in the comments. I may be wrong on a couple things here and maybe you can uh, give us some additional info to work with. Now, what I want to talk about is the lures, the areas, and why. So, I'm sure you guys have all seen guys casting off the bank or casting off boats or trolling spinners. Uh, you know, when you see like a Silvertron, a large spinner like this, you see guys trolling off boats with these, but then when you guys, you see guys off the bank, they're casting these. So, and and they're trolling uh, quick fish style bait, you know, deep diving like crank style bait. Now, you don't see any of this other stuff being applied when prop water trolling for king salmon. You basically see uh, spinners and quick fish style baits. Now, salmon do strike a lot of different things. Now. How and when you do it is what's going to matter. So certain days where I don't see any surface activity from the salmon, I'm seeing them on the graph down along the bottom, or let's say they're deeper than eight feet. Um, trolling can be a very effective way. Jigging can be very effective at that time. But when you see a lot of salmon rolling or you don't see them associating to the bottom, um, if you're a troller, you know, you could troll these guys out weightless and long line them means the, the farther your line goes out the deeper it goes so if the salmon are suspended you could still catch them like that but we're talking about casting here so if i don't see surface activity for salmon i may run into the back of a dead end slough these fish are always in dead end sloughs or near shallow flats if i don't see salmon in the back of these dead end sloughs or salmon rolling across shallow flats, or I'm fishing for something else, or I throw a bait and I get no activity from salmon, more than likely I'm gonna switch to jigging or trolling if I'm trying to catch it up. But we're talking about physically seeing salmon. There's a lot of times I've been out there jigging for salmon and we see them roll, and I always have like a flying sea tied on, we'll cast that out there, reel in, boom, and catch an active salmon. So I want to kind of give you a little outlook on that. When the salmon are on their main thoroughway, meaning headed up to a hatchery, they're going up the Sacramento River, they're going up the McQualamy, they are on pace to go. They are moving the correct direction and not at a dead end. Those fish are much more likely to hit a lure versus a fish that is at the end of a dead end slough. Although you will find larger numbers of salmon at the end of dead end sloughs, and there is ways to get those to bite, and we're gonna go over that, the fish that are on course, heading up river, basically not blocked off, are much more likely to hit a casting lure when you physically see that versus those dead end fish. So I think I got that clarified when I troll, when I jig, when I cast. Now let's say I'm going down, um, I see no jiggable fish, no fish in the deep holes. So I go to the end of a dead end slough. I see nothing jumping on that river either. Otherwise, I would try to cast for them. In those areas where they're headed up the river, if I seen them jumping, I would try casting for them. But I see none of that. So I run up a dead end slough and I see them back there. They're at the end of a dead end slough. I don't, I don't care where it is. All the dead end sloughs along the sack, the McQualamy, American, all these places you can legally fish for salmon. Salmon are going to be at the end of every dead end slough. So normally, so when you look at things right away, things that we troll off boats, quick fish style bait, or you know, like a Silvertron, these are for trolling, so they're very difficult to cast, but guess what? They still catch salmon. 
You could take a quick fish style bait and throw this on your bass fishing crankbait rod and fish this and they will eat it. But the problem is when they go to these dead end sloughs, those fish are very shallow and it's around grass. So it kind of eliminates that right there. But what you can do, salmon do not like big displace. I mean, they don't like something when it's displacing and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to cause them into reacting. They're not eating out of hunger. They're striking it because they're pissed off. So what you'll oftentimes see is guys catching them on square bills on accident. Um, colors that salmon like. Pure chartreuse if the water's really green. Um, fire engine red. And if the water's real clean, pink often works. So those are real common colors. And one of the most overlooked is pure white. Now, size plays a big role. Don't be fooled. You'll see guys out there and they'll catch salmon on a tiny spinner that day versus not hitting a big spinner this day. And that's the same thing with that crankbait right there, a little square bill versus that giant square bill right there. I would prefer to have this painted right here probably in pure chartreuse or uh, fire engine red. But that bigger displacement some days is going to get certain fish to react and that smaller displacement. Not all king salmon are the same. Sometimes they get irritated by a spinner. Sometimes they get irritated by a really loud noise and a tighter vibration. Sometimes they get irritated by a jerk, jerk stop in front of them. Sometimes they get irritated by, believe it or not, a glide bait that drifts over and bumps them and they turn and nail it. So what you got to think about here is noise, vibration, and displacement. So if something vibrates real tight, a lot of the time that'll get a salmon to react. Oh, and also size. Certain fish don't want to smack something large. They'll smack something small. So you gotta be ready to take your time. If you have something with a smaller hook on it like that, hopefully there's not too many snags around to where if you're fighting that salmon, he's gonna run into those snags. So size can play a big part. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Bigger, better, badder. The evolution of the buzz bait is upon us. The evolution baits grass burners, a high performance bass snatching machine. High end components, inline displacement, larger profile, balanced body for fast or slower retrieves, better deflection, and oversized treble hooks. You wouldn't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, would you? Find out more at evolutionbaits.com. You ever heard of Calcoast Fishing's Rod Mule? For super convenient rod transfer or storage? And how about the Bait Sack, a puncture-proof, clip-on bait protector that comes in an assortment of sizes? Or maybe you're looking for the best non-puncture calling system with Calcoast Fishing Clip and Call. And it wouldn't be complete without a money beam. I trust it when money's on the line. And let's not forget the Cali Clip, a super convenient, dual-purpose bait clip. Want to find out more? Visit CalcoastFishing.com. Hey guys, did you know that Juris Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly pan fish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX premium, or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country in Escalon with one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from North River, Hughescraft, and now Crestliner? Chances are they have the right boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your repair or boating maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. Also, if you're gonna cast something like a Silvertron, this is what I do. I put a little 80 pound braid leader and a quarter ounce weight in front of it, and I use a rolling chain swivel and I tie that onto my line. Therefore, I can cast this very easy because the bait doesn't have much weight. It's designed for trolling. Now I can cast this. So on a spot, let's say, 
guys are catching them on flying seas and you want to try to target fish that didn't want to hit the flying sea, you can do something like this and catch fish that won't hit this that day. The salmon go upstream and they die every year. These fish aren't learning anything, but not all of them hit the same stuff. So size, vibration, displacement, color, and the way they move, all right? So with all that in mind, I'm gonna give you some other little key things here. Sometimes you'll go into these areas and you'll throw a rattle trap. You, you can see my size differences here. I'll try the pure white, I'll try this size. And you need to bounce around, especially if you see fish and you're not getting bit. You need to bounce around. Let's say you, you threw a jerk bait and it stopped in front of them. You couldn't get them to react. You need to try a square bill. You need to try a spinner. You need to try a rattle trap and you need to bounce around in those sizes. And believe it or not, you need to try glide baits. You will see guys catching king salmon on glide baits a lot. And throwing big swim baits for bass and stripers is very popular now. And this is why you're starting to see guys catch salmon on it. Because as this fish moves in, salmon do not like sharing their space with other ones. They sit in kind of unison with one another. So as a big glide bait, a glide bait that has good side to side directional change, and while you're doing this retrieve, if you've ever worked a glide bait, reel and stop, reel and stop, and it'll travel side to side much farther. And that is a great retrieval to do with king salmon. You don't want it tight. You want this thing to come over and invade their space to where they'll pop it and they'll get those hooks. You don't want it not to bump them. You physically, if that salmon's cruising right there and you can invade his space, he will strike that thing. So you have to think how that would work sometimes versus a rattle trap just cruising by if that doesn't irritate him. Now, if it came over here into his personal space, you could get that fish to strike. Now, I wanna talk about something else too. And this also applies with vertical jigging. You guys have seen me use laser minnows, poochie chovies. Now, you may have noticed in some of my old videos, one ounces were catching big ones on one ounces. Believe it or not, sometimes that size applies for jigging too. A real large jig gets them sometimes, and a small jig gets them sometimes. And normally the jig weight is just dependent on current and depth for a vertical 90 degree presentation. And yeah, that has a lot to do with it, but it also has a lot to do with that particular fish, how moody he is, or how easily he think he can hurt this versus a big one. Some salmon won't strike the big one, some of them will strike the little one. But so when I'm talking about casting lures, I'm basically talking about six or five feet and less where jigging becomes difficult. But one thing you can do with these little one ounce uh, minnows like this is you can cast them out and slowly reel, lift and let it fall. Slowly reel, lift and let it fall. And it kind of does the same thing. And if there's grass around, what you need to do is snap it when you feel it in the grass. These smaller hooks tend to tear the grass instead of rip the grass out. So you can still kind of vertically jig, although you're coming across at a horizontal plane and you will still catch a lot of those fish in the mouth. Yeah, you do tend to snag a lot of salmon that way, but they will also bite it sometimes if they're down there on the bottom where some of this other stuff may be getting hung up. You can still try that jig trick. Another thing I wanna talk about, if you look at these hooks right here, these are designed for bass. These are inward bend treble hooks right here, okay? That's if a fish eats it. Remember, a salmon's not trying to eat our bait. He's trying to wound the bait. So if you have hooks like this, and you're fishing for salmon, I'm not gonna suggest this for any other species but salmon, grab some needle nose and open that hook up. If you look at all salmon lures ever, ever designed, they're on round bend treble hooks. The reason why a round bend treble hook is so much more important for salmon is when they slash at it or bump up against it, a round bend has a much higher hookup ratio. So if that salmon with his hard mouth slaps it, that inward bend's not gonna hook nearly as many as that round bend. So keep all of this stuff in mind, guys. A jerk bait, a crank bait, the size of your spinners, uh, the most common colors in my opinion, chartreuse is probably the number one color, uh, fire engine red, maybe number two right there with pink. I always see pink really excelling in that crystal clear water. Don't be afraid to throw white. That is absolutely critical. And remember, sometimes the demeanor of these fish is different on a 
tide versus a slack tide. Salmon are going by scent. They smell where they came from. And when some are off course, you have to realize if it's an outgoing tide and they're in the back of a dead end slough, their behavior is going to be different then versus an incoming tide. So let's say you went to the end of a dead slough, okay, a dead end slough, and you seen fish back there and it was the outgoing tide. And you couldn't get those fish to react any differently. But an incoming tide is going to send water in to where maybe those fish immediately think they're going to travel back out. Their demeanor is going to change at that point and you may be able to get those same fish to react to one of these at that point. So that's some good information for you guys to work with. Uh, remember guys, have fun out there, catch these fish, be safe. They're big gnarly fish. When they shake their head, they can jam a hook into you. Use a big net, have a good time. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman. I appreciate you watching. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and informativefisherman.com. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you.